Gene Davison, LiveWeatherBlogs.com here. We're going to take a look at the information that we have uh, on things that happened in the Bronx uh, for the tornado that occurred in the Bronx. We're taking a look at the radar and the radar data from this time. You can see this cell right here is the culprit that moves into the area. This is a supercell that cut out in front of the main line here yesterday and caused this to, ha to occur. You're going to see here on the, and it, we're going to, we're putting this in motion, we're going to look at this uh, velocity scan. You're going to actually see the Bronx is located around here. Just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it about right there. You see how that one area of purple and blue matched up. Um, that was definitely very noticeable. You'll see it again here one second right there that's where we had the velocity scan show the actual rotation in the area so that's a little bit of information on that uh, on that cell we're gonna now go and look further down south we're gonna look at the uh, Millville New Jersey cell that was real tree line winds and once more, we're going to look right before we do that. We're going to look at the uh, cell that moves into the Bronx. You can see how that kind of kicked out there. There you go. Right there. Had that uh, slight notch in it. You can see where that rotation was. And we're going to take a look, like I said, down into the uh, Millville area now. But that was just something I wanted to be shown to you with the uh, that happened in New York City yesterday. And now we're going to go down to. Uh, Millville, take a look at their radar image. Now this is a look into uh, the cells that occurred yesterday uh, in the generalized New Jersey area. And we're going to pull up here. You're going to watch the cell come right out in front of right out in front of Millville. This is Millville right here. We're going to we're going to put it back in motion. You can see how. Look at this. This area in Maryland, we, we also uh, had 85 mile an hour winds, but watch here. Millville is right there. See the cell when it hits there, right there. That's where the boat out the worst. You can see it there. Um, and you can see where the, the Boeing occurred and made that 80 mile an hour wind gust. And look at the, look, you can see the gust front on that sucker. Um, and then take a look here. You get the inflow notch near Atlantic City, um, which goes with those water spout pictures and the funnel clouds that happen there. You can s watch one more time. This is Atlantic City in this area right here. Watch the inflow notch and I'll show you right here in the inflow notch. You have it backwards seat up. It's the first thing that caught my attention. And then you'll see that that inflow notch really kicked in and and also is why we caused some rotation here. We're going to look at it one more time. Backwards C had rotation. Then it bowed out Millville. And then it backwards seed again before moving off the Atlantic coastline. Very pretty much detailed. You can see where, why, um, how that storm blew up right on that bow, on that uh, gust front, and then here. Um, look at that huge bow echo that caused that in Caroline County that caused that 85 mile wind gust. So very strong winds yesterday. Very interesting day uh, on Sunday. Here's some more information also we found interesting. We're taking a look at the storms tonight that were rolling out of, that we showed earlier, that were rolling out of Beckford County. Look at that. We have hail, half inch hail that was reported 1102 tonight um, in Beckford County. So, uh, something that I may take a look at tomorrow to find out uh, information. Also, we have numerous trees down in Surrey that was that needs to be looked into also because obviously there was a tornado warning at the time. And 1.75 inch hail, which is pretty good size hail, too, uh, for a, a storm. We're going to take, uh, like I said, they're going to have to take a look at that, I'm sure, tomorrow, further on, to find out if, uh, indeed, there's anything to do with the tornadic, tornadic cell um, in that area. This is in the area of the low gap, which is right near 89. Um, we're south of the border here. Blue Ridge Parkway cuts over this way, so east of the Blue Ridge, not surprising, where these storms uh, come out at and can be uh, 
most tornadic. And as like I said before, we're gonna we can go into the um, reasoning behind that um, in the future. And we're gonna zoom up. I'm zooming up into uh, Bedford County now. Zoom into uh, my neck of the woods here. Let's come up here. Green's Mill, we're not far from the site this is happening at near Green Mountain Lake. Uh, we're gonna give you the exact re uh, exact location here. This occurred in what they call Huddleston. That's a Huddleston area of Beffer County. So something that we definitely need to take a look at. Um, there was hail in that storm. It wasn't surprising to what I saw on radar. Taking a look here at the severe weather outlook, you can see uh, once said we're going to have that jet stream dipping down, kicking those disturbances, and um, also a low level jet coming in. Wisconsin, Minnesota is going to be a high, higher area. You can see that based on Storm Prediction Center, where they think is going to be the best threat for storms, and that will include tornadic activity tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, you see disturbance kicks down. Uh, into Chicago, Detroit area. A uh, little less threat for tornadic activity at this point from what we're seeing, but it, it can definitely happen based on the uh, the way that the disturbance kicks across the jet stream. You see 15 percentile in there, and now we're going to take a look at something else I want to show. Here is a uh, sounding page. This is out of Minneapolis. We're going to take a look at this. You can see the change in the wind with height. And look at how high it gets up here. Definitely good on the photograph here. It's in the classic supercell area. And taking a look at some other information that this has, you know, 1180 is eh, it's an alright cape. But um, we also have matches to say, you know, significant tornadoes are possible in that information. So definitely when you see stuff like this, a lot of levels and increased winds with height and freezing levels is also good for hail. So something we to watch tomorrow and and see blizzard indexes not as high as it could be but we're going to definitely look at that information again when the next sounding comes in and i'm doing a comparison here i mean look at the cape not very high in roanoke tomorrow i mean shower storms are possible but freezing levels a little higher than normal actually in roanoke here the winds are definitely uh changing veering but um when i have the setup as good as it was today i mean go further down nothing really looks like it's pointing out Take a look here at the reports page. You can see most of the reports have it down in the southeast, and most of your tornado reports is up here in the northern plains, of course, with that jet coming through. Look at Utah, even had a tornado today. Nashville. Take a look at that. Yeah, Lance Spout type tornado in, uh, near Wellington. You can see all this information here Montana, North Dakota. Tornado flipped tractor trailer, also funnel reported by train spotter. So this is saying, you know, it did happen, definitely happen, and I'm sure we'll get information on that uh, for F scale tomorrow. And we'll pass it on to you here at liveweatherblogs.com. Also taking a look here at our uh, our tropical picture. Nothing major here. We have a lot of dry air coming in, sucking into here, into the islands are getting dry. So a nice time to take a vacation down there. Not nothing to really worry about. Yes, some storms off the coast. You know, always watch those. The only disturbance, disturbed areas right there that might move into this general direction and may have a shot, outside shot, of creating something later um, in the week. But at this point, nothing really um, big standing out here in the hurricane sector. Taking a look here at the National Weather Service forecast for the Rowan Valley area. Um, 87 tomorrow, chance of thunderstorms. Some of these thunderstorms could be isolatedly severe, kind of like tonight. 87 degrees, 90 on Wednesday, 92 on Thursday, 88 on Friday, and, and staying in the lower and mid-80s Saturday and Sunday, looking a little bit into the next weekend. So it's been, once again, another busy day here at LiveWeatherBlocks.com. A little bit less than yesterday, but just an overview of what happened yesterday, but I figured I could show some radar data to show you the um, reasons why certain things look certain ways on radar. So that's a little bit of a lesson today also. Other than that, Dean D. Davidson here at LiveWeatherBlocks.com. Hope you have a great evening, and I'll be on again tomorrow with more updates. Dean D. Davidson, LiveWeatherBlocks.com.